Good morning, Knicks Nation. Happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday, the 18th day of May 2022. I hope that this morning finds you safe and healthy. And I hope that the same can be said for your family and your household, that they are having all of their needs fulfilled in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and those who are the first responders trying every day to save lives. And those that pick up garbage to keep streets and sidewalks, parks and highways clean. And those that make deliveries like food for our convenience. Double blessings upon those that are trying to help rescue and deliver the victims of child pornography, pedophilia, child molestation, the victims of prostitution, child prostitution, the victims of human trafficking and sex slavery. And double curses upon the perpetrators, the perverts and the profiteers who are out here trafficking in human misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children with no roof over their heads and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So, last night, we know now the trades that may happen because we know now the order of the draft. We know now the order of the draft. So I can see, I am feeling a move by the Knicks. I am feeling them moving up. But the problems among Knicks Nation is you mentioned trade and y'all just go into crack mode right off the bat and start doing the craziest trades. Start proposing the stupidest trades that I, oh my God. First, let's go over some parameters. We are talking about trades now with the New York Knicks. So let's go over some parameters so we know what we're dealing with. Okay, let's go over some parameters. Parameter number one, first of all, above all things. Okay, listen carefully, Knicks Nation. Above all things. We, we Knicks Nation, we, the New York Knicks organization, the New York Knicks, Scott Perry, Leon Rose, Walt Perrin, Tom Tibbet, the whole crew, we, Knicks Nation, want to become a long-term winner. What does that mean? That means we want to be year in, year out, understood to be a contender. Like, no question about playoffs. Understood that we are contending for the chip every year. Understood that we're going to be in the conversation in terms of teams in the playoffs that can make a run. That's a long-term sustainable winner. That's your Miami Heat. That's your Boston Celtics. That's your Milwaukee Bucks. That's all of the teams. That's Golden State Warriors. That's the Dallas Mavericks. Long-term sustainable winner. Okay? We want to be that. That's what we're trying to become. Okay. Now, in order to be that, one of the hallmarks, listen carefully, of all of those teams is they draft and build their team through the draft. They don't trade away players they drafted as cornerstones. So any of y'all coming at me with some RJ trades, stop it. Stop it now. He's a cornerstone. We drafted him. We drafted him third overall. And again, listen carefully. Some of y'all that don't catch the context, take the wax out your ear. I said he will become, when he is developed, a better version of Jimmy Butler. Some of y'all saw Jimmy score 40 last night and start tripping. How you saying he better than Butler? I didn't say he was better than Butler. I said with development. Y'all catching me? Some of y'all can't see anything to do with development. And I understand. Because in Knicks Nation for the last 20 years, we ain't hardly seen nobody get developed. We trade them before they get the chance to develop. So I understand. But if you're watching NBA ball, you've seen it with other teams. Bam out of bite. Tyler Hero for the Miami Heat. Right? Right? Uh, Duncan Robinson. You've seen other teams develop their players. See, some of y'all don't understand. These guys don't walk into the league as all-stars. They get developed. You've seen Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown is really a better even example. Jalen Brown came from University of California, a, a tremendous athlete, could not shoot to hit the broadside of a barn. 
but had the makings of a playmaker and shooter. Now you're seeing all-star Jalen Brown after the development. Marcus Smart came in the league, couldn't shoot to save his life. Look at his stats, but could play some defense. Defense wins championship. And the Celtics, in spite of all of the media reports, even out of Boston, they're going to trade him, they're going to trade him, they're going to trade him, they're going to trade him. They stuck with him. And now he's the defensive player of the year. And he can shoot now. After six, seven years. That, my friends, is development. See, we should learn that word in New York. Development. That means you don't look at a guy the way he is today. You're looking at what he can become once his game is perfected, once his game is developed. Okay? So we're talking about development and the New York Knicks. We're talking about long-term sustainable winning. So please don't come at me with RJ trades. And don't come at me with players that have been given the keys, given the ball on their team, and hasn't developed. Like Killian Hayes. Stop it. Okay, let's be real here. So let's look at what we're dealing with. This year is an excellent opportunity for the New York Knicks to move up. Now, let me list you the reasons why. We have an uh, excess of picks. Okay, next year we got two first rounders. Okay, we have first rounders, our own first rounders going forward. Plus next year we got two because we got the Dallas pick. All right. So and then we got a ton of second rounders. This year we only got one, but next year we got at least three. And we got more coming. Got a ton of second round. So you got draft capital that you can trade. Why? Because if you look at the New York Knicks, if you look at their roster and you look at their death chart, we have Emmanuel Quickly, who's 22, going to be 23. You have Quentin Grimes, who's 22. You have Obi Toppin, who's 24. You have Mitchell Robinson, who just turned 24. You have R.J. Barrett, who's going to be 22. Okay, you have Cam Reddish, who's going, who's 22. So you got Jericho Sims, who's going to be 24, 25. So you got a whole bunch of what? Young players that you did what? You drafted, with the exception of Cam. I And, and I want to tell you, because of the principle of developing a long-term sustainable winner that I just outlined in terms of drafting and development, I always will favor players that we drafted, which is why I mentioned that if Leon Rose was to let Mitchell Robinson walk for nothing, it would be a fireable offense because the Knicks drafted him and developed him and he's getting even better now. So if you let him walk for nothing, you just wasted four years. That's a fireable offense. To me, the Frank Nilakina situation, they let him walk for nothing. Okay. But I can ha- understand that because Frank is injury prone and, you know, and, and so you can't, you don't want to rely on him. And Tibbs didn't like him, obviously, because he didn't play him. And so now he's playing a key role off the bench in the second unit in the rotation. That's the key thing here. He's in the rotation for Dallas and he playing lockdown defense, which is his strength. So you let him walk for nothing and that was bad. Because they should have traded him a year before that, if that was going to happen, okay? But you definitely, Mitchell Robinson's a starter that you got in the second round. You cannot let him walk for nothing. So I'm expecting the Knicks to resign him. I really am, just based on that. So you don't trade guys like that. You want to keep them, okay? Because you develop them in your system. It's part of your long-term strategy to win, Okay? So you have all of these young guys that you drafted. I just named them. Again, let's go through it. RJ, Mitchell Robinson, Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, OB Toppin, Jericho Sims, Deuce McBride. You drafted all of these guys. Okay? Those are your cornerstones. That's who you're starting your long-term sustainable winning with. Everybody else can be traded. Unless they're a superstar. And we don't have one of those. Okay? We don't have one. We're trying to develop so that one will come. We're not at that point yet. We're not there. Okay. 
So with that in mind, you already have. So now you got point guards and Emmanuel Quickly and Deuce McBride. And you also drafted Joe Kobitis, who hasn't played a game for us yet. So I kind of count him in the gray area. We haven't had him play for us yet, except in the summer league. But he hasn't played a regular season game yet. OK, so he's in the gray area because we did draft him, but he hasn't played for us. OK, you got him. You also have Quentin Grimes on the wing. Now, you also have Cam, but I'm favoring Grimes again. Why? We drafted him. We drafted him. Okay. You got RJ Barrett at the small forward. You can also play Cam behind him. You at the power forward, you got Obi Toppin. Okay. And that at the five, you got Mitchell Robinson. So you got and you got Jericho Sims, who you drafted behind him, who you really stole because 58, come on. To get a player 58 is rare. And we got one with Jericho Sims. He's a solid backup. I love this kid. Keep him, right? So we have these guys that we drafted. What do we need? We could use a backup to Obi. We could use a backup to RJ. We can use a guy that can push either of them, you know, because there's talent out here now. We really need to move Julius Randle. His attitude sucks, and it's not going to change. Julius Randle has played eight years of NBA basketball. He's averaged 20 points and 10 rebounds pretty much his career. And somebody might say, well, see, that's great. We want to keep him. No. Because there's some players that are winning basketball players and there's some players that are losing basketball players. Some players can put up a lot of stats and still lose. Julius has lost on every team he's been on except the Knicks that one year when he had a career year, which was his contract year. You get other players that go to different teams and they always end up winning because they are winning players. They just know how to Win. Okay? Julius ain't one of them guys. And his attitude sucked. I mean, it really did. And he thinks, he believes, Julius, that he's the number one option. Nope, he's not. RJ should be the number one option. Because we drafted him. Third overall. Now, this year, because we got all of these young guys, we got a nice core. We want to see what we can build on that with some more talent. And we have opportunity to do that. Let's take a look at some of the opportunities that I'm talking about. So number one overall, Orlando, they got, they got the number one overall pick. Consensus is, and I kind of agree, they're going to pick Chet Holmgren. They're going to pick Chet Holmgren because them and Oklahoma City would want him badly. Okay. If they pick Chet Holmgren, they're going to play him at the four. He's going to be Christoph's Porzingis, hopefully without the injuries. Okay. He can shoot the rock. He can play make. He can help defend, um, you know, to guard the rim. And then you got kind of a rough neck next to him, which you want, you know, um, with, um, oh God, Michael, uh, you know, Carter, Carter, right? You got a, you got a rough neck next to him in Wendell Carter Jr. Okay. So you want that. They have their starting five lap from last year is Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter, and they were they were kind of platooning their the power forward spot because Jonathan Isaac was hurt. He's been out two full seasons, and he's coming back this coming season at age twenty five. You don't even really know what you have yet with him, but let's assume he comes back, you know, full strength. So <clears throat> if you draft a Chet Holmgren at first. I, if it was me, if I was Orlando, if I was their coaching staff, see, you got to think like the team you want to deal with. Some people keep saying, why are you thinking about them? Because you have to. You can't just think from the Knicks perspective. Real life doesn't work like that. Teams make deals that benefit them. So now you look and they say, well, if you're Orlando, what do you would do? If I was Orlando, I would start Jonathan Isaac and bring Chet Holmgren off the bench behind him. That's what I would do in his rookie year. Therefore, I wouldn't need to move anybody, really, because I would have what I need. But eventually, if Chet is the deal, you're going to have to come to a, a decision with Jonathan Isaac. And so if you want to just really take that next step and just start Chet right now and then keep Okike or Mo Wagner as your backup, now you got to trade Jonathan Isaac. 
I like Jonathan Isaac's game. Another Florida State kid at 11 Hamilton's program, 6'11", 7-foot wingspan, can play the 4 or the 5. I like him. Um, problem is they don't want Julius Randle, right? That's the problem. They don't want Julius Randle. Why would they? That's what they're trading Jonathan Isaac for. We would have to move Julius Randle, and it would be difficult. And that's why this is a slight, I, I, I peg this as a slight possibility, not a strong one, a slight one, because I believe Isaac will be available because they're going to put hunger in there. And, and I could say if it was me, I'd keep both of them for a year at least. But maybe they want hunger to just start now. He's the number one overall pick, right? So maybe they want him to start right away. And now you don't need Jonathan Isaac. So you're going to move Jonathan Isaac and see what you can get for him. So he's available. I'm not sure what we would trade. I don't want to trade any of our young players. That's why I mentioned guys that we did not draft. Like Cam. I love Cam Reddish. But we didn't draft him. I'm not trading Grimes. So I would look at that. But I don't think that's going to work anyway. So don't get too hyped about that, Knicks Nation. Because I don't think that's going to work. That moves us down. So let's move down now. Oklahoma City. They're drafting at the second pick. And they're drafting at, where they else? They draft in two places. They draft in the second pick and the 12th pick. So they're going to get two good players. Um, they need a five. They, their wings are all set. They got, they got a wings, uh, trio that, that is very good and I think is going to get, uh, better. Their wing trio, uh, for Oklahoma City is, let's see, they got Shea Gilders Alexander. They got Josh Giddy. That's your, you forget it. That's your backcourt. No need to mess with that. And then you got Dort. Dort is a solid, tough defender. Very tough, very solid defender. And becoming a reliable open um, spot-up shooter as well. And he's young. He's in his 20s. So you got your wings, you know, perimeter pretty set there. <clears throat> you got Darius Baisley, who's basically a project at the four. And you got Alexander Pokachevsky, also a project at the four. Okay, you got those two projects at the four. But... That means they're going to have, if, if Holmgren goes first, they're going to have the choice of Paolo Banchero or Jabari Smith, both of whom are better than anybody I just named on their team. Okay. Because Pokachevsky is very light. He's still developing. Maybe he becomes something at some point, but right now he's not. And I think if you put, I would take Balanchero, Banchero because I would take Paolo because he's a roughneck. 6'10", 250 pounds, can handle the rock. I put him in there right away. And then at your set, they get a 12th pick, I, I'd look at a 5. See, they're still in development mode. Now, this is the key right here. They got Isaiah Roby there. They got Jer uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, a solid player out of Villanova. <clears throat> but this is the key here. If I'm Oklahoma City, right, with those kids I got, Alexander, Giddy, Dort. Dort has had playoff experience and played very well in the bubble playoff when he did as a rookie. Giddy is really good. And of course, we know Shea Gilles Alexander is a budding superstar. So they got a decision to make. They could try to push for the playoffs this year. And the thing that would help them do that is Mitchell Robinson. They're a threat to steal Mitch Rob from us. They got the cap money. They got the squad. Because now you put Mitchell Robinson at the five with Paolo Banchero at the four. And the same crew I named. Then you still have backup of Trey Mann, Theo Maladon. You still got backup of Baisley and Roby. You could be a playoff team with Mitchell Robinson. Especially as he's now developing an offensive game and he's already an elite rim protector. So... They can decide to go that way and try to get our Mitch Rob, which is why I say we have to resign him. Or they can continue in their development and use their 12th pick on a Duran or a Mark Williams, one of them two guys, one of them guys, whoever's available at 12. One of them will be. So you can get one of those two guys at 12. You can get Paolo at four. So that's, you know, a scary thought to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see nothing there that would help us that we want to take from them. And if we're going to sign and trade Mitch, I want both their picks. I want their second pick and I want their 12th pick. 
okay, I'm not, I'm not just trading Mitch for my 12th pick. I, I want your second pick. All right. So th- they got to make a decision, but I think they stand pat, get Paolo and then move to the 12th pick and get a five. I think they're going to do that. So they're really not an option for us. But now, and then you go to Houston. You know, Houston will take whoever's left between Paolo and Jabari Smith. They'll take them. Um, they're still developing. They really, to me, their big pick is down when they're 17th pick because they need a point guard. You know, Kevin Porter Jr. is extremely talented, but he's not a point guard. And of course, neither Jalen Green, both very inefficient guys at this stage of their career. They need a point guard, a real point guard. And they could use somebody that has a little height to them. I mean, they don't have to be 6'8", but they need somebody that's not 6'1". They need somebody that's tough defensively. Okay. Um, to me, their pick would be Agbaji. I would get, try to get him if I'm them at 17. Or they could go for Ty Ty as well who's going to be available, I think, when they pick their second pick, you know. So that's, I'm seeing them pick uh, whoever's available between, you know, Jabari and Paolo. And then in their second pick, they'll probably get a point guard because they need a point guard. They got Eric Gordon. They, they got Dennis Schroeder. They might star Schroeder and have the rookie, whoever they pick, come off the bench. But that's the makings of a future for them. Okay. So for them, again, I don't see much that we can get from them that we're, see, I'm just going through here and saying, what can the Knicks deal with? We don't have no business really in the first three picks. There's nothing there for us, but you get to the fourth pick and things change dramatically for the Knicks because the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh big time opportunity for the Knicks. So let's start with the fourth, the Kings. (sighs) The Kings, let's look at their starting five um, from last year, okay, this past season. Here's their death chart. All right, you ready? So they start Jaron Fox. They got Davion Mitchell pencil in there as a starter, but they didn't start him. They started Justin Holiday, who's really a bench piece, right? Then they started Harrison Barnes at the three, Trey Lyles at the four, and Sabonis at the five. So they're starting Sabonis as a five. They can use, Trey Lyles is a solid backup. He is not a regular starter. He's a solid backup. They signed Fox to a, you know, a max deal. Um, they got Mitchell. They are going to need a four. Okay, they're going to need a four. And we happen to have a four. That they can use. I can see them moving Lyles to the small forward spot or Justin Holiday, who's 6'6 and a really good defender, and putting Julius Randle at the four. And this fits perfectly because Randle would really be the third option. He'd be the third option behind De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis. And Sabonis is 6'11". So now you have 6'11", Sabonis, 6'8", Randall. You you know, we get Harrison Barnes, an expiring deal. And so we can do business, I think, with the Kings. We could do business with the Kings. If we wanted that pick, okay, so if they took Jaden Ivey, if they took Jaden Ivey at the fourth spot right there, um, he's a development piece. So now you'd be dealing with development with him and Davion Mitchell. You could do that. Or we can send you Julius Randle in our Dallas 23, right? And you can give us Harrison Barnes in your fourth pick. Okay. We could talk if they wanted also our 11th pick, but we'd have to discuss that. But I would do that because then we could get the fourth overall pick. We just got rid of Julius Randle. We could use a backup four. Or we can pick Jaden Ivey or Benedict Matherin or Keegan Murray if they want. I don't see Keegan, but you see what I'm saying? We could we could do that. That's a possibility. We could do business with the Kings. And we know that Scott Perry has a relationship with the Kings organization, having been their general manager. We could do business with the Kings. They need a four. See, I wasn't sure until I looked at the depth chart. I thought Sabonis was going to play the four. Nope. So bonus is playing five. 
and they messed up and traded away um, Marvin Bagley, who was a four. So now they got Trey Lyles. They need a four, and, and Julius would fit perfectly because they would believe that they can make a playoff run if they take Julius and put him in at the four with the Donovan, with uh, De'Aaron Fox. Okay? And they'd still have a second pick in 2023 with the Dallas pick. See, Dallas ain't going to fall off the cliff next year. I mean, unless Luka gets hurt. If Luka's out for the season, okay, I'm with you on that. But even then, they're going to re-sign Jalen Brunson. Um, They're going to make some tweaks to their roster, but they play really, really good defense. They play really, really good defense, man. And if if Luka's healthy, they're going to be in the playoffs again next year, pushing again. Okay, so that's a good pick, the Dallas pick. And now Sacramento can make a run at the playoffs and still have a Nux number one. Okay. So that's a possibility. We could do business with the Kings. Detroit. Now let's talk about Detroit. Now Detroit's situation is a little different. Detroit starts, let's see here. Their depth chart goes like this. They got Corey Joseph starting at the point guard. Why? Because Killian Hayes is turning into a little bit of a bust because he's been hurt a lot. See, again, a European player that's soft. I'm not saying they're all like that, but it does show you got a a pattern. Frank was always hurt. You got a lot of European players that are just play soft basketball, man. And Killian Hayes is turning out to be like that. Now, he's still still young. He could develop. But Corey Joseph's your starting point guard. And so they got Kay Cunningham, who really is the point guard. You got Kay... Basically, their core right now, the core in Detroit is Cade, Sadiq Bay, and Jeremy Grant. That's your core. Okay. Sadiq can play the two or the three or the four. And Cade can play the one, the two, or the three. So they got very, you know, because Cade is six, eight, Sadiq is six, eight. Very good duel right there. That's a good foundation. That's your Tatum Brown type foundation to get started. Jeremy Grant is in his prime. Now he's going to be expiring. He's expiring after this season. So do they want to trade them or do they want to extend them? They got a decision to make. But I keep all three of them, right? And that's another team. They got cap space. They got cap space. What are they going to do with their overall, which they have now, the fifth overall pick? Some people say Shaden Sharp. I see Tankathon got Shaden Sharp in there. If you want to go for development and and wait on Shaden Sharp a couple of seasons, because that's what it's going to take. Okay, you could do that. But... Could also trade the pick for Julius Randle, you know, because Jeremy can play. Jeremy can play the three, so you have Julius at the four, Jeremy at the three, okay, K Cunningham at the point, Sadiq Bay at the two. I like that team. You know, you got Roughneck Isaiah Stewart at the five, you know, and so um, hey, uh, you got possibilities there. Then again, they're also interested. In Mitchell Robinson. And they're also interested in the point guard, which is why we have rumors about them looking for Jalen Brunson as well, because Killian Hayes isn't working out. It's as simple as that. And Corey Joseph ain't a starting point guard in the NBA on the playoff team. So you need another guy. Okay? You need another guy. So you got Cade, you got Sadiq, you got Jeremy. You could add you could add Julius to that. They really would and they and I like Isaiah Stewart, but and if they get Mitchell Robinson. Ooh. So that's another possibility. We could do business with them. But the sixth spot, man. Now we're talking too. Because we're talking about the Indiana Pacers. Now, <laughs> Indiana starts Malcolm Brogdon. Malcolm Brogdon is hurt more than anything. <laughs> they start Malcolm Brogdon, right? So wait, Tyrese Halliburton is going to be the starting point guard. They drafted Chris Darte. He's just starting two guard. Boom. There you go. Backcourt set. Now, they got Buddy Held at the small forward spot. I don't think he stays there. Uh, and I think you're going to end up Malcolm Brogdon being traded because he's hurt most of the time. Why would the Knicks want him? Well, because he's a good training wheels as you're developing Deuce and IQ. He's going to be hurt for at least 30 games. You know that. So... You got Deuce and IQ getting some minutes here. So you have that. 
TJ Warren's been hurt for the last two seasons. He's a really good player, but he's hurt for the last two seasons. You could you and they got him penciled in at the four. And your backup is some guy named Brissett and then Jalen Smith, who was overdrafted by Phoenix and traded to Indiana. And you got Isaiah Jackson, who's really a five. So you can use a four. And we could use a point guard to help mentor our guys. There you go. Julius Randle, Malcolm Brogdon, give me your pick. I'll give you mine. Fifth pick, Benedict Matherin. There you go. Okay, so that's another one we could do business with. We can do business. So far, we say Kings, Detroit, Indiana. And now let's talk about, let's talk about Dame Dollar's team. Let's talk about Dame Dollar's team without mentioning Dame Dollar as a trade chip, right? I'm not trying to, don't come at me with Dame Dollar, okay? We're not, no, we're not doing that. But look here. Dame Dollar is your point guard. Anthony Simon is now established as your two guard. He becomes your new CJ McConnell. He's that dude. Okay. But they started Josh Hart at the three. They got Nasir Little, who can probably play three or four. He's that Dennis Rodman in miniature. He's a mini Dennis Rodman, really. He's baby Dennis, really. That's what kind of game Nasir Little has. Defense, rebounding. That's him. Okay. Um, they started Josh Hart, who really is a bench piece. Josh Hart's a really solid second unit dude. So they got, and they had Justice Winslow, who another, he's another guy that shows up for the game in an ambulance. We can get the cartridges ready because he's going to get hurt, right? And, and he's been like that since he came out of Duke. That's why he got traded from Miami, who picked him initially. He has a lot of talent, but he's always hurt. Okay. So they got him. So now they can use a couple of guys. They got cap space and they got trade exceptions. We can, Evan Fournier. Can go right there and play the starting small forward. Right there. Boom. Done. You could do that. You can bring him off the bench too if you want to. Julius Randle. Can, you got, you got an opening. You need a four. Done deal. Can get that done. Okay. And we can get your pick right there. We'll trade picks with you and we'll take your seventh pick. There you go again. Benedict Matherin. There you go. Okay. There you go. Or, so what did I just name so far? We can do business, really, with the Kings, the Pistons, the Pacers, or the Portland Trailblazers. We could do business with any of them. We got serious, we could do business with them. Serious reality business. We can move Frank Fournier. We can move Randall. And of course, Burks, Burks is easy to move because Burks is a playoff type piece. And he's, you know, he's a solid player and he's expiring. Problem is, Burks is kryptonite to Thibodeau. That's why we would be moving him. He's kryptonite to Thibodeau. Thibodeau seems to believe he's the starting point guard. Okay? So we have to move him. And then, of course, Nerlens Noel has got to go. And he's also an expiring deal. A team that wants to create cash space would want Nerlens Noel. So you have that, too. So you got two guys you can move that are, you know, cap, cap movements, right? Derrick Rose is also an expiring deal. So you got all of that. I'd like to keep D Rose if I could, but in these scenarios, if I get a Malcolm Brogdon, I don't need D Rose. Okay. So we got possibilities. So to me, the Kings, the Pistons, uh, Indiana and, and Portland, we can make some movements and we can move our program forward by getting some young talent in here, either a Jaden Ivy, um, of course, you know, I love Benedict Matherin. We can get him. I like Sohan. If they happen to stay at 11, we can get Sohan. Or if we get a second number one pick, if we made a deal and we took somebody's two picks for our one pick, like Oklahoma City, we can get Sohan and we could get a Matherin. So there's a lot of possibilities. Put it that way. A lot of possibilities. And we will see. We will get a glimpse of what the Knicks are really planning to do. We talked yesterday about not having fully committed to a rebuild, you know, because of the fact that they keep bringing in a, they brought in a Kemba, a Evan, and they signed up a, a, a Julius to a long-term deal. But we got a young core, right? We just named it. We got a young core of guys we drafted, guys that are good, guys that are ready to step in. Obi's ready to step in and start. RJ obviously already starts. And I think Quick and Deuce need an opportunity to, to win that point guard job. Okay, both of them. Let them fight it out. We got give them an opportunity to win. And I believe Grimes 
is ready to start. I want Grimes in front of Fournier. We drafted Grimes. He plays stellar defense. He's got a knockdown Allen Houston like spot up jump shot. And I think we can see some more out of him if we get a healthy year out of him. And I believe we will. We're going to see something. I'm very excited to see him, Deuce, and Jericho in the summer league. I think we're going to really, and whoever we draft, it's going to be good, man, watching them play. It's going to be fun watching them play the summer league. Hopefully none of them get hurt, but that's what we want to see. So uh, we have teams we could do business with um, from really between the four and the seventh pick. And to me, Benedict Matherin is the target. I would really want Benedict Matherin if I could get him. Um, Sohan is my guy at 11. Or anything in that 10 to 12 range. I want Sohan. Okay. Um, but in between four and seven, my object of my affection is Benedict Matherin. Now, the only thing I don't know, and really don't know, is how the Knicks feel about Benedict Matherin. I don't know how they feel about him. I don't know how high. Only thing I've heard from Ian Begley about the draft, and this was earlier in the process, but that they were very high on Jabari Smith. That they were very high on Jabari Smith. But at this point, I don't see them getting Jabari Smith because he's going to go either second or third in this draft. Um, Chet Holmgren, I think, really will go number one to Orlando. I'd be shocked if they didn't pick Chet Holmgren at number one. But I can see Jabari and, and Barchero going two and three in whatever order. So they, I don't think they're going to be available. But that's the only person I heard. Oh, wait, wait. And the Knicks were high on Ivy as well. Ian mentioned both of those very early in the process, before the NC2A tournament. He mentioned those two guys. So, but Ivy's a possibility and Matherin's a possibility. Now, I like Matherin. <laughs> I would pick him above, above, above Ivy right now. Even though Ivy, I'm not going to front, is going to be picked before, before Matherin is. I like Matherin long term, though. Um, I see star. I see stars with him, man. He's really, I really high on him. Six, seven, a nice, a sweet jump shot, man. Uh, as a, as a, um, uh, a freshman. Was he a freshman? No, he was a sophomore year. Average 18, six, two, three assists. Um, needs some work on the defense, but that's just a matter of attitude. That's why you have a Tom Thibodeau. Okay. That's why you have him. So I think he'll be fine, but talent. Dog, him and Ivy are just straight dogs. And, you know, we like dogs in New York. So I'm real high on Matherin. So I think there's a possibility there, but we got to see. I can see Matherin coming in behind Grimes off the bench in the second unit. And really, you know, he's going to drive Thibodeau crazy, but because of how high he would be drafted, well, if he's drafted between four and seven, I don't know what Thibodeau going to do. I mean, he did sit over. He was drafted eight. But Let's see what happens, man. The future is bright, put it that way. And taking out a, a Fournier and taking out a Julius just makes more room for the kids to breathe and grow like a Obi and a Grimes. And I think we won't be disappointed giving those kids those minutes. So that's my that's my take after the, seeing what happened last night. I don't think they're going to stay at 11. I think they're going to make a trade. I think the Don's going to make a trade. It's an excellent draft to move up. It's an excellent draft to grab some talent that we could use. Um, like I said, I like um, Jaden Ivey. I like Ke uh, not Keegan Murray, Benedict Matherin, and I like Sohan. And I think we could get at least one of them. We could get at least one of them in this draft. Solid picks, man. Very good picks. So that's what we're thinking about. Uh, I don't think we get Oklahoma's pick. I think they we got to protect Mitch Rob from them. They're going to be coming at the Mitch Rob. I don't think we got anything in Houston that we want. Um, I mean, there's an expiring deal in Eric Gordon, whatever. And we already have that in Derrick Rose. And then, of course, Orlando, there's a slight Jonathan Isaac possibility, but it is slight. I don't know how that would work. We need a third team involved to get that because they don't want Julius Randle. They already got, that's the problem. They got too many fours, but they'll have Chet Hungry. And they have Wendell Carter Jr. starting at the five, who can also play the four. So I don't, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough, okay? We're going to see Knicks Nation, but it's exciting, though, because <clears throat> this is a move-up year. I, I, you know, this is a move-up year. I want to see how this plays out. This is a move-up year, and Leon is really smart. So let's see what happens, man. We're in good shape, y'all. We're in good shape. Uh, anyway, it's hump day. Be safe out there. Enjoy yourself. Shalom.